As a primary care doctor for 30 years, I thought of myself as a pretty holistic kind of doctor. I would uh, treat the whole person and I recognized that stress caused medical problems at times and I'd often bring up how the stress in your life. But I didn't really understand how stress works until I started investigating the new neuroscience. So here's a story that if you've taken my class, you've heard this, but this really helps a lot of people understand. Um, this is a story that Gabor Mate tells. I heard him tell. Um, he said, when I was two months old, the Nazis invaded Hungary and my dad got sent to a labor camp and there I was in Budapest with my mom. And a few days later, she has to call the doctor. And she says, doctor, Gabby hasn't eaten for three days. He, he won't nurse, he won't touch a bite of food, he's crying all the time, something's going on. And the doctor says, well, Mrs. Mate, of course I'll come see him, but I have to tell you, all my Jewish babies are crying. Now, what do I know about Nazis? I'm two months old. What was I getting from my mom? What were we all getting from our mothers? Uh, you can see how generational trauma gets passed along, but do you know, and, and now I extend his story here, do you know how many neurons per day his brain was wiring together in that environment? And we do know. Your brain is wiring together approximately one million new neuronal connections per minute between the ages of zero and seven. So he's like, wow, I wired together a brain in that environment. <laughs> no wonder I had to get on antidepressants in my 30s with the stress of family and medical school. I had wired together a hypervigilant brain. I don't even remember it. My autonomic nervous system remembers it. So that story and other reading I've done in neuroscience has completely changed my view of stress. For 30 years, as a primary care doctor, somebody would come in and they'd give me a story about, oh, I got this problem and that problem and this, I'd hear this medical stuff, or maybe they'd been around a bunch of doctors and nobody could figure it out. But for these complicated problems, sometimes I'd ask, hey, you think stress could be playing a role? And patients are willing to explore this with you, especially if you have a relationship with them, but I'd often get an answer like, well, I thought about that, but you know what? I'm getting to bed on time, I'm going for a walk every day, I'm eating pretty healthy. Now, 20 years ago when I was going through a divorce or my son was hooked on heroin, now that was stressful. But now, you know, my finances are stable, my relationships are okay. And like I say, I'm like taking care of myself. And my response used to be, oh, okay, just making sure. Sounds like you got stress under control. That's not how stress works. Stress could be something that happened 80 years ago and your brain got into a habit of doing this. Stress could be when you had cancer 15 years ago and you kind of got a little hypervigilant where every little new new symptom, uh, you got it checked out and you were in the hospital and almost died once maybe. What? Yeah, you got a little bit on edge. And then your brain just developed a habit because it practiced that and now you have a habit loop in your brain. You don't have to go back and figure that out. What you do have to do is understand this is how brains work. That when you're in these kind of situations, brains develop habit loops or neural circuits that are actually beneficial at the time, maybe no longer serving you now. Whether your brain has developed the autopilot habit of running away, the flight response, or the autopilot habit of anger, the fight response, or the auto habit um, behavior of just feeling tired and needing to check out, the freeze response, or maybe it's developed a habit of making sure everybody else around you is okay, the fawn response, whatever, your autopilot neural circuit is, the automatic thing that happens, you can't change it if you're not looking right at it. So the most important first step is stepping back and noticing, I see what my brain's doing and don't blame yourself. This is a neural circuit that developed outside of your conscious awareness, not your fault. You can't change it if you're not looking at it. Take a look at it and just in the act of looking at it, even if you can't do anything about it in that moment, when you step back and you just call it something different, there's that habit loop my brain is in. Boom, you're on the road to recovery. That is the first step. You're separating yourself from it just a little bit. When you do that, you're watching it from the outside instead of being caught up in it. Even if it grabs you a few seconds later and you gotta run away from it or go take a pill or distract yourself, just in the act of noticing, oh, look what my brain's doing, with no, without judgment, without blame, just in that act, you're already on the road to recovery. So if you're trying to change a brain circuit and you're feeling stuck or uh, just need a little help, you can find me at bouldermindbodymedicine.com. Uh, I love seeing patients individually. I love seeing people in my classes. I'm evangelistic about my online classes where we talk through the tools about how do you change these circuits. 
But if you're doing this on your own, I hope this helps you uh, to remember to step back Watch what your brain is doing without any blame. And remember, stress is not necessarily just what's happening to you right now. Stress on your nervous system could be just some neural circuits that your brain learned a long time ago. Realize that these are autopilot responses outside of your direct control, but you can start training your brain to do something else, even if you can't control it in this moment. Let me end with a poem again from Joseph Wynn, his book Beyond Thoughts, two-line poem. Life begins the moment you stop fearing your own mind. Your mind is making some automatic responses. Can you notice that? Instead of be afraid of those responses, can you look at them with compassion and love and understanding that this is just your scared brain trying to take care of you and it doesn't need to be doing this anymore? All right, uh, best wishes and good luck on your healing journey. See you next time.